Not completing this crucial task at the beginning of the school year could set yourself up for failure. Breaking down the syllabus. By the end of this tutorial, you'll know exactly how to break down your study plan and stay on top of the most important tasks so that you can find success in high school and in college. My name is Justin Collard, founder of Thrive Success Services, and the very first step for you to be successful this school year is to grab your syllabus and actually understand what it is. You can think of the syllabus as a kind of roadmap for your course for the year. Every teacher is going to have a different one, so you'll need to look at each and every syllabus to see what the requirements are. You'll find things on there like course overviews, deadlines, assignments, projects, grading criteria, classroom expectations, and many more. Understanding what each course and each teacher requires in order for you to be successful is one of the most important things you can do at the beginning of the school year. To help us understand a syllabus more, I have an example of a college syllabus. Let's break it down. You can start by identifying the sections that are in your syllabus. The first section of this syllabus has a course description and objectives. The purpose of this section is to let you know what exactly are you going to be learning and what are you going to be responsible for knowing by the end of this course. It's very helpful to look over this section so that you can determine what are the things that you already know going into this course and what are the things that you're going to have to work on in order to be successful in this course. Another common section in a syllabus is the course schedule and the topics. This is where you will typically find things like what you'll be studying, any assigned reading that you need to complete on your own, homework, assignments, and projects that are due by the end of that week, and any other important course information that your teacher or your professor wants you to know. While it is common for your assignments, quizzes, exams, and projects to be listed under the topic section, Sometimes, professors and teachers choose to give you more information about each individual assignment, essay, project, or quiz. These are helpful because it gives you a more clear picture about what the project is going to entail, the length of time you have, and the deadlines. Additionally, the assignments typically will give you word counts, expectations, and other things that are very important to getting the best possible grade that you can get. When it comes to quizzes and exams, professors will typically tell you an idea of what you need to study in order to be successful. The most important information you can take from these sections, however, are the deadline and the dates. Part of being successful in high school and college is knowing when things are due. Later in the video, we're going to talk about a way that you can organize all of your syllabi in order to be successful, so make sure you stay till the end for that tip. Another important section to read is the grading criteria and the grading expectations. It's here that you'll learn the percentage that assignments, quizzes, exams, and projects make up your grade. It's important to know these percentages because a lot of times we automatically assume that the exams are the most important part of our grade. Many times, it's more common for your day-to-day -day assignments to be worth the most. The final section to pay attention to are the teacher or campus expectations. At universities, a lot of times these are standardized and you'll have the same expectations across the board. However, if you're a high school student, these expectations may be similar from teacher to teacher, but each teacher may have their own expectation that you need to make sure that you follow. A few examples of things that may differ teacher by teacher at high school are the way they want you to enter the classroom, the way that you submit your assignments, the use of electronics in their classroom, and other things along those lines. Just make sure you pay attention and you know what your teacher wants you to do in order to be successful. For step number two, you need to figure out a system of organization that works for you when it comes to managing your deadlines. You can grab a calendar, you can grab your phone, you can grab a planner, whatever works the best for you, and start inputting those dates course by course so that you know exactly what is expected of you every single week by every single course. Once you have the major deadlines input in your calendar, you need to start looking at the projects that need to be completed, the tests you need to study for, and the daily assignments that you need to turn in. When you look at your assignments as a whole, it can quickly become overwhelming and you can feel like there's no possible way that you're going to get all this accomplished. But I want to give you a tip to make these things not only feel like you can get them done, but you can get them done quicker than you ever believed. I suggest you start by looking at your assignments week by week. You're going to have different things that are due from different courses such as reading, online discussions, quizzes, assignments, and maybe even pieces of a project that need to be completed. My suggestion is to take the thing that you are looking forward to completing the least, maybe it's a research paper for say, and breaking it down into bite-sized steps over the entirety of the course up to the deadline. So for example, instead of sitting down all day the day before it's due and writing your research paper, what about in the very first week you set a goal to just select the topic of the paper? Once you write the topic down and you have it selected, you're done for the week. Maybe week two, you schedule several times to research that topic so that you can get the information that you need in order to write the essay. Once the research is complete, you could schedule a time just to outline your essay. You can chunk the sections of the outline and write a few pieces pieces of the essay every day, maybe twice a day, all the way until you get to the point of completing your research paper, moving into the editing and revision phase, and then submitting it. I guarantee you if you follow a step like this, 
for any of your assignments that you're not looking forward to completing or assignments that you think are going to take you way too much time. With this system, you're going to get these things done even faster than you ever believed you could. Another tip to keep you on the path to success, once you have your milestones set, your goals set, and your plan set, be flexible. Your plan is not something that's written in stone, and you're not a failure if you don't follow the first version of your plan. The only way you can fail is that if you don't revise your plan when you don't get something accomplished on the deadline that you want. Here's the thing about deadlines. You're in control of your goals and your deadline. If you miss a deadline that you've set for yourself, just set a new one. Make sure it aligns with the deadline that your teacher or your professor is giving you for the due date of the assignment and get back to work. A lot of times our plans can paralyze us instead of moving us to action. Don't let that happen to you. Give yourself some grace and make changes and adjustments as you need to. The most important thing is to constantly review and stay on top of your plan so that you don't get so far behind that you're not cramming everything in right before the due date. So there you have it. Those are my tips for using your syllabus to become a successful student in 2023. I want to wish you all the best as school starts back up. And I hope that these tips have helped you become a more successful student this year. If you want more tips like this, please be sure to like, subscribe, follow, and share this video with others who might be interested in mastering the art of breaking down their syllabus. Again, my name is Justin Keller with Thrive Success Services. I win when you win. And remember, don't just exist, thrive.